the late rounds of your draft. They are crucial. They are pivotal. They're where the Pukas come from. They're where the Raheem Mostert's come from. So today, we're going to give you our favorite sleepers. Their ADP has to be passed 120, all right? So we're talking double-digit rounds. You've been sleeping on them. Adam, on the other hand, not sleeping on anything. He's six monsters deep already. It's 8 a.m. in the morning, so we are here to bring the energy, all right? Mm. So we're going to go one by one by one, just nominating our favorite sleepers in 2024 fantasy football drafts. Again, ADP of 120 or later based on sleeper ADP. So hopefully it's good enough for you guys. You know, ESPN, people complain about ESPN. I looked at their ADP yesterday. The kicker for Dallas is going above Christian Kirk. I'm like, I don't know. What do you want me to do? Brandon Aubrey. Brandon Aubrey's above Christian Kirk. What do you want me to do? No matter what ADP you use, there's going to be some complaints. There's no way. It sounds like people are looking to continue to draft starters. ADP is like, it's become political at this point. It It really is political. It's divisive. I'm pretty sure that most people don't even know what that word, like what the wording is for that, that is acronym. Fair. We're so into it that like the word ADP is just second nature. It's a word now. It's not, I a, think, it's I not think an acronym. What, I think what we need to do is we need to hold the, an election. I think we need to hold an election each year where like the best democracy, ADP. it's just like this is the ADP that everybody talks about going yeah. forward so that nobody can get mad. We don't want to see, you know, the future elections become what the world's and who, our who is governments. The, who is the Donald Trump and Stain of ADPs oh, right no. now? Sleeper. Sleeper. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Talk about that. Talk about that? Talk, yeah. Why? Elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Andrew. Who do you, cut who that you shit got, out of the who thing, Who do you got though, as your, as your first sleeper? No, seriously, cut that shit out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that shit on my timeline. Uh, my first sleeper that I want to talk about actually is going to be Matthew Stafford. Uh, I feel like he's a player that all of us kind of like currently at his ADP. I mean, I think in our draft guide, he's a sleeper candidate for the yeah. most part. Where, um, where is he going uh, ADP-wise? Like, what quarterback is he? He's, like, right at 120. He tried to start it. Yeah, he gotcha. tried, he tried to really, to really finagle it. I, yeah. I snuck in right there. Yeah, he's right at the at From what the I remember, edge. on, like, underdog, he's QB 18, 19, 20, like, in yeah, that range. Yeah, pretty late. Yeah. But he was a guy that was fresh at the top of mind. I did a video on my channel where I was talking about sleepers as well, and um, so the data was fresh there as well. I, I think – Looking at last year, there's a couple data points that I really want to bring up. One, that he had the fourth most red zone passing attempts in the NFL. He had 84. So when they're in the red zone, he's throwing the football. Whether that be to Kyron Williams, Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, doesn't really matter. Matthew Stafford is throwing it. This offense is one of the better offenses in football. They have an improved offensive line this year. Year two of Puka Nakua. It just it feels like people are pushing him down draft boards because maybe name fatigue, age, Injury risk, there's been rumors every other offseason, it feels like, of him potentially wanting to retire. I I think that stuff is pushing him down draft boards. But last year, he finished with five quarterback one weeks in a row to end the year. And I don't see anything really changing in this offense. It should be pretty much the same old, same old. We have the injury with Puka right now, but everything that I'm hearing is it's like not a, really that's like a, a seven to ten day injury it's not really fine. anything yeah. to worry about he should be good for week one so for me it's it's all wheels up for Matthew Stafford I think he's one of the best values at the quarterback position a sleeper at the quarterback position and really could be a QB1 this year I think he will be a QB1 yeah I have him I, I think I have him ranked uh up at like quarterback 14 or 13 which you know it's not in quarterback one territory technically but it's still like five or six spots higher than ADP and he's a dude that I feel like I'd be fine starting him in a one quarterback league because I do think this offense is it has such a high floor with Sean McVay running it and whenever he has real weapons whenever he has like wide receivers that can make plays and catch the ball and especially like the combo of Puka and Cup with their yak ability I think that's like the big thing here because he's so good at creating uh, opportunities for them to run with the ball afterwards right and if you don't have those types of explosive playmakers then maybe the offense becomes a little bit stagnant but that's not the case here and like you said offensive lines really underrated really really good I also wonder you know their defense without Aaron Donald like yeah. maybe they're letting up a lot of points um, should be a, a division where they're gonna have to score a lot of points with the Rams and or uh, the, improved Cardinals the Niners the Cardinals the Seahawks yeah like those are all teams I think could put up points so like the West I is crazy love this love Mr. Staffy yeah I mean you, you talked about him being a sleeper I think like I don't know all the reasons why he's down quite so far but he, I think for me anyway one quarterback I'm looking at can I get guy with really high upside and that's probably going to come from a rusher. So once the list sh- shrinks out of, you know, the Kylers, the a Riches, all the guys that really run for a ton of yards, there's some guys that maybe offer a little more rushing. It doesn't take much to offer more rushing than him. But so from me, a passing standpoint, who offers that? There's no – it's negligible because it's not much rushing anyway. So then let me ask you uh, on that note, like the guys that are going in that range that do have some rushing ability to them, like are you taking Deshaun or Stafford? Stafford, easy. Okay. 
I think I think that's a, like a real debate to be had based on where they're getting drafted. I, I think Watson's a few spots lower, but if you prefer a rushing quarterback, then Watson's a dude who'll probably add, add like twenty five rushing yards a game. Yeah, for sure. Well, he is. I mean, he's um he, he definitely can. But with Stafford, I think what's interesting you talked about the improved offensive line this year. That's coming off of an improved offensive line for them last year because in twenty twenty two they were terrible. That's why he ended up getting hurt and their whole offense like was not the same. It's kind of crazy how like going into last year how a transformation was how bad the, the Rams were projected to be. It's like their offensive line was supposed to be bottom three in the NFL. Stafford and Cup were both like coming off of broken years where we're like neither of them are going to hold up, and all of a sudden they're just completely new rejuvenated. Team. And I've been hearing a lot out of Rams camp that Cooper Cup looks really good yeah. this off season. Like the the injuries behind him, he's looking back to his old self for the most part. We'll see what happens. Dude, but Marcus Robinson, brother. D Rob is I sh- I think we'll talk about him maybe at the end of this video when we throw in a couple like later round zingers but yeah I, I'm a big fan I, of D Rob as their three too. I was just gonna say the last thing on Stafford was that to that point like all that leads me to okay I think people are also a little scared of the injuries but the back injury has been hurt yeah but in ranges of outcomes at this point when you're outside of like really drafting starter territory what if Cup and Stafford stay healthy 2021 he's a top five quarterback yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not like his he can't throw the football anymore. That's what he does. Yeah. You don't need his rushing to be a top five QB. And I just look at the quarterbacks. I, I actually pulled up the ADP on sleeper. Quarterback 18 is where Stafford is. Right after him, quarterback 19, Kirk Cousins coming off an Achilles injury. Yeah, after him, Aaron Rodgers coming off an Achilles injury. Pass. After him, Baker Mayfield. And then you got Deshaun Watson. It's like Matthew Stafford is such a smash pick in that te- uh, territory there that I just can't imagine. Who are the, like, the three QBs going above him? Uh, is it Herbert, T-Law, Caleb? Goff, T-Law, Daniels. Those are the three oh, right okay. above him. Where's so Dan- going, then? Daniels actually has the rushing upside that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Herbert's uh, 12 right now. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay. So he's he's above Caleb Williams, Tua, Goff, Lawrence, those guys. But I, I think Stafford, like, I, we've been doing a lot of these underdog drafts. I've been doing a lot of these underdog drafts. Like, right now, Matthew Stafford is in my top three most exposure at the quarterback position. He just feels like an auto pick for me. I love I love the value that you're getting. I love the upside. Like, Yeah, he's my he, QB, too. In like every he's the ultimate draft. sleeper for me right now. Yeah, for, sh- for sure. You want to talk so. about the ultimate sleeper? Uh-oh. Let's talk about my man's Jalen Polk. Okay. Well, the New England wide receiver that they took in the second round. Now, Polk was a dude that I really liked pre-draft, and I comped him to a, a version of T. Higgins. I thought if he hit his ceiling, he can become T. Higgins. Now, I know a lot of people will be like, oh, that's crazy. Like, listen, T. Higgins was a second-round pick, too. These are how things happen. They just play well, and all, all of a sudden, they become a staple of the offense that they're in. With Polk, he's going to be a starter in two wide receiver sets. Like, he's already earned that uh, at the Pats camp. They don't have a lot of size receivers, and uh, from what I've heard and from what I've been told, they're going to be a run-heavy team. However, they're using receivers that are big, like Polk, like uh, they like KJ Osborne, ones that can block well. So, like, I like Pop Douglas a lot, but he's only going to be on there for three wide receiver sets, which they're not going to run at a very high level because they're a run-first team. Polk's going to be on the field for 85 90% of the plays there. Pretty much all the beat reporters are like, yeah, we just see Jacoby Myers again with this kid. And I'm like, that's mm. fantastic because Jacoby was great in New England. Obviously, the touchdowns didn't come, but... If you're projecting a team to be different than they were last year, it would be the Patriots because they have a different system. They have a different quarterback. They have new weapons. They have all this new coming to them, and that's the kind of upside I like to shoot on because Polk's a dude that's like a 14th, 15th, 16th round pick, and the unknown is so great that like people don't like to take the shots on him, but Polk's a good separator. Polk can get up and, and get the ball. Polk can pretty much bring in anything during his catch radius, and there's no one else in that offense to catch catch passes when it's him and someone else on the field because it's like K.J. Osborne, uh, Kendrick Bourne, they really like, but he's coming back from a, a mid-November ACL tear. So I think right. Polk can start to get into a rhythm of six to seven targets a game, and then when Drake May gets on the field over the second half of the year, that could be like a, a big second-half breakout. So Polk's a dude that might start slow just because it's the Patriots offense, but uh, he's someone I want on my roster the second half of the year for sure. I like yeah, that thing. I, and I'm just looking at the ADP of guys around him right now. Like the three guys above him, you got guys like Quinton Johnston, Dontavion Ooh. Wicks, Ricky Pearsall. The guys below him, Troy Franklin, Adam Thielen, Roman Wilson. Like yeah. You're talking about a guy who, in Jalen Polk, has the immediate opportunity in front of him. Guys like Wicks, uh, Troy Franklin even. I, I like Troy Franklin. I think he does have some opportunity. It's not as clear as Jalen Polk. They're fun, exciting names, but like when you really look at the situations, like Wicks is one of the fun breakout candidates. And I, honestly, you could put him on this list easily. But... Reed, Watson, Dobbs. Where's his, where, where is his path to playing time? Right. Like, 
if if you told me that he finished the year playing forty five percent of the Packers snaps, would anybody be surprised whatsoever? No, and you don't want to you don't want to draft a dude that's playing sub fifty percent. Yeah, it, it, well, people would there are people that would be surprised right now. They'll just be real quiet that's quite fair. to that's the fair. end of the end that's of the year point. for sure. Somehow every all four of the actually five if you include Bo Melton, all of them are going to be playing eighty percent of the well, snaps. Well, I mean, just by odds, one of them, a couple of them are probably even going to hit. Just it might not be Wicks. Yeah. I mean, you don't know. You're just rolling dice there. Mm-hmm. But that, that's the that's the point here with Jalen Polk. It's like you're getting a dude who's getting onto the field immediately. And regardless of how you feel about the talent, like we're going to be right on talent. We're going to be wrong on talent. But if his talent hits, you're paying bottom level basement prices for it. Yeah. And we've right. seen rookie wide receivers like go bananas during the rookie year. So well, and, and even the the reality too is like if you're drafting him in a redraft league and you have Jalen Polk, maybe you're throwing him on as like one of your last round picks, you know, you're not spending a lot of draft capital on him. Like you said, the basement price, two, three, four weeks go by. You need to drop Jalen Polk and he hasn't done anything up to that point. Sure. Drop yeah. Jalen Polk. You can move on. It's not going to cost. It's not going to be the same as dropping, you know, a guy that you drafted in the sixth round or the seventh round or the I, eighth round. I was going to ask on that point. What, what, what ADP was he at exactly? You remember or roughly? Uh, he was 169. Yeah. He's like really deep in draft. That is. Yeah. Yeah, he he's he's that he's that dude. Like you're you're gonna look back. You you know you do a live draft with your friends, whatever, and then you look at like the last three rounds, and you're like, man, there's only like two players I hit. I think he could for sure be one of them. Yeah, when you go back and look at that draft board, there's some steals in that range. It could be him for sure. It could be. Yeah, he yeah. could end up being I him. Guarantee him too. it's gonna be him. You guarantee mm. it. The Nikki sign seal delivered. You know what? I guarantee. I guarantee <laughs> that if you sign, no. <laughs> damn. When you guarantee and you can't even with the straight face say it, that's <laughs> trouble. Yeah. Um, Shout out uh, league safe. Speaking, yeah. <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of live draft boards, speaking of leagues with your friends, uh, if you are a first time commissioner on League Safe, this is the easiest way to set up your league, right? If you're a commissioner and you're like trying to get money from your friends to buy in for the league, you're getting like PayPal and Venmo and cash or whatever. It is a fucking nightmare. Anyone who's been a commissioner knows that. LeagueSafe.com has this perfectly organized for you where you set up a league all custom settings if you want then you just drop a link in the group chat all right and everybody can join everybody can pay however they want credit card paypal whatever whatever floats their boat whatever sinks their submarine available on league safe if you are a first-time commissioner if this is your first time setting up a league on league safe you are getting a 50 dollars buy-in credits as a commissioner okay so if you play in a 12-team league and it's a $50 buy-in, guess what? You set up a league on League Safe using the link down below, the code BDGE, and your buy-in is actually free. You don't even got to tell your friends. Listen, I'm I not, I ain't going to tell your friends nothing, but you should go use that link. You should get the $50 credit for the buy-in, and if you're not the commissioner, send it to the commissioner. Let him have a, an easier life, all right? It's tough out here for the commissions. I, I will say I'm a big fan of league safe i've used league safe a lot for my own leagues not even sponsored by league safe for my own stuff use it for all our dynasty leagues it it makes life as a commissioner so easy like i would strongly recommend it yeah so use the link down below or send the link to your commissioner to let him set the league up it is makes makes life a thousand times easier all right code bdg when you get on there nikki yeah. charity hashtag nikki charity you know you're giving you're giving people free free things you know Nikki Charity. You say charity you're giving, or charity? It's charity. Mm-hmm. Like you're, you're making it free for people. Because guy. Now I get to write this off. Here's the best part. <laughs> I'm going to make you as the commissioner. You can you can have a free buy-in because I'm going to win this shit anyway because I'm going to be drafting mm. Brandon Cooks in the late part of the rounds. Mm. Mm. Quietly. I mean, when I say quietly, almost inaudibly. Wide receiver 19 over those last 11 weeks of the season after the buy. Because everyone talks about how great CD was. Nobody talks about how good Brandon Cooks was that later part of the year. So I, I don't understand now... Moving Brandon into Cook, this part, CD Lamb. I'm looking to elite fantasy. I'm looking for Andrew's you. eyes. He won't give them to me. He's you deep want, in his phone. You want me to look so you in the eyes? Is yeah, that what I, I want to see right where now? your Brandon Cooks take is. No, I just want to see it. I'm waiting to hear the pitch on Brandon Cooks. Yeah. I, I'm waiting to hear it. Well, I just said wide receiver 19 over the last 11 weeks of the season. When you think of Cowboys offense, let me ask you this question: What do you think of CD Lamb? CD Lamb, Dak Prescott. They throwing the football, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if Dak's going to throw for league high over under i think 32 and a half if he's gonna throw for 33 touchdowns he's he's probably gonna CD's throw for gonna get all of it yards I mean, maybe <laughs> i mean n- can you guys name me the other wide receivers on the roster they it'll drafted be, it'll be ferguson Ooh. okay there you go jalen tolbert baby. jalen tolbert he's my, he's the sleeper on this south team. south alabama product jalen tolbert they dra- they drafted ryan flornoy who Brian say Flor- that again can- ryan Ooh. ryan flornoy right yeah you said ryan or did you say brian ryan flornoy okay i just want to make sure southeast missouri state product you know we are in skip <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of competition there's a the lot of competition <laughs> they brought in in a really pass heavy offense for brandon cooks 
And y'all still hate him. Okay, uh, relax. No one said they hate him. I'm talking. To, I'm talking to him. I let's, just was waiting for let's, the pitch. Let's, let's talk about this though. Okay, Brandon Cooks. I, w- I was pretty in on him during the offseason as I'm looking through the Dallas depth chart, and I'm like, yeah, they're going to pass the ball a lot, and they don't have a lot of weapons here. Mm-hmm. He's now put together back to back years of under 700 receiving yards. Uh, he had, I think, three touchdowns two years ago, and he did have a touchdown spike last year, eight touchdowns. So my question is this, though. If last year's eight touchdowns, like half of those went to Jake Ferguson instead, which could easily happen this year, and then you're looking at back to back years of sub 700 yards with four touchdowns. We're probably not really in on him. And I don't know what that actually means for, honestly, it, it might mean something more for the Dallas Cowboys passing offense about how fragile this offense could be if they don't have CeeDee Lamb in the wake. But with Cooks, I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous that like that touchdown spike last year is what's like keeping him fresh top of mind for us. Okay, well, I would say over of that, the offense in the first half and the second half for the, well, not really truly a half of the season, but where the bye was. So seven of his eight touchdowns came when they started throwing the ball more. Yeah, the the right. offense yeah. just changed and transformed. So when you look at the last two years, that's not really what we're project, projecting going into this year for the Cowboys as a whole. Fair yeah, enough. no, fair. And then I, I'll just, oh, there's no, where's the wood? Here we go. If anything was to happen to CD Lamb, the offense probably breaks, but. Brandon Cooks might just get some that gross I'll, ass fucking think targets. About that. If CD Lamb's out, it's like they don't have a strength on their offense. It's pretty bad. Dude, it's all bad. It's, it's bad. Big, it, you don't want to watch it. Someone who's been going heavy on Dallas. Brandon Cooks might get two hundred targets. Maybe. Any? Do you like Jalen Tolbert? Uh, I did. I, I do in Dynasty. Uh, yeah, I mean, but like not in a redraft. Uh, you uh, like him as look, a deep flyer, dart throw in Dynasty. Let me yeah. ask you, how many really spicy? How many guys like that actually pan out where it's like, all right, he was cool like two years ago, yeah. and now. He's no, just, he probably not, but he'll get opportunity, and I think they need they need some fresh passing options. Where I'm, I'm in on Bra- like I'm I'm fine with Brandon Cooks. I think he'll be good, but I'm I'm not. I have a hard time like selling myself on any sort of upside. But maybe it is like the post buy Brandon Cooks. Like maybe that is what we're gonna get this year. I do just, you like Chris Olave? Do I like Chris Olave? Uh, sure. Uh, he he gave you. They're, look at their numbers. He was better than Chris Olave the last part of the year. Similar targets, more touchdowns. I mean, now even if those if those touchdowns drop I mean sure his his upside weekly would be not there if he didn't have touchdown upside but I think Dak's gonna guy a guy that can throw three to four touchdowns any given week no for sure that's 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 a good point I feel like this conversation is just making me think about how bad Dallas is gonna be if CD or Dak miss time yeah if one of those two guys misses Man. time I've been getting more and more nervous about that as this is gonna has been be scary. pushing the Dallas uh, agenda yeah yeah I mean it feels not too dissimilar from like the Jets where if Garrett Wilson goes down I guess they got Brees Hall. There's 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 a couple teams that are set up like this where Malachi Corley season enough. baby. I so I moved him so quickly out of my top thirty when I did my. I mean, <laughs> not me, baby. You're an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot. Dude. You, my friend, all right, are so, all right, dude, one dude. of y'all idiots. Give me people a sleeper. I've ever seen. Wow. You want a sleeper? Is it my turn again? It's your turn. It's my turn. Well, we're gonna get very spicy and go to like Malachi 80, Corley. Holy shit. ADP of like one twenty five, and we're dude. gonna talk about Pat Frymuth. Okay. Uh, Pat Fryermuth, he's been one of my favorite tight end late round targets, I guess, this year. Also, just a uh, caveat here. It is Thursday. Uh, what's the date? Thursday, I, August 8th. I so was going to give this caveat okay. as I was giving this my pitch. This is pre-Brandon Ayuk being traded. So as of this recording, he is still on the Niners. There's been 75 reports that there's already a deal done with Pittsburgh, which is obviously fake news, but it might happen over the next 24, 48 hours. If that's the case. I will make it an individual video on this channel about all the fantasy impacts. So make sure you subscribe, but we're going to, we're going to progress as if yeah. Ayuk is a Niner. The, the deal's not done yet. So we'll just operate as it is. And that's, Currently, that Pat Frymuth is the number two receiving option today on the Pittsburgh Steelers. And when I'm targeting late-round tight ends, when I'm targeting tight ends in general, I like to target tight ends that can be that number two receiver at worst in their offense. You talk about Jake Ferguson, Pat Frymuth, the same thing, much cheaper cost. Uh, And I look at what he's done over the last couple of years. Last year, he was banged up, missed a lot of time, really didn't even surpass 60% of the snaps until like week 14 of the year just due to the hamstring injury. But the two years prior to that, he was putting up low-end tight end one numbers. Now they have an upgraded quarterback. Whether you think it's Russell Wilson or Justin Fields, it doesn't matter. They're better than Kenny Pickett. And so it's going to be a much better situation for Frymuth this year. He's healthier. And then you have the addition of Arthur Smith, which a lot of people want to go kind of poo-poo on Arthur Smith. But the reality is, when you look at how he uses tight ends, you just look over last year, the Atlanta tight ends, it may have not been your beloved Kyle Pitts, 
but the tight end room in general had a 34% target share in Atlanta. Dude, John, who had a career year. I just want to jump in because I've been fucking going heavy on the Steelers offense, especially Pat's a dude that I've, I've made like two videos in the last week where I've been hyping up Pat. Arthur Smith gets a lot of shit, but at the same time, Last year, they ran the single most two tight end sets in the NFL. They're going to do that in Pittsburgh with him and Darnell Washington. I was just about to say, yep. Darnell Heavy Washington. investment in the O-line, so they're not going to ask Pat to uh, block very much. Pat, two years ago, 700-plus receiving yards as a sophomore, which is a really good second year for the tight ends. Jonu Smith, yeah, career year last year. Arthur Smith was also the coach when Kyle Pitts had a 1,000-yard rookie year. And then in Tennessee, he also produced an eight-touchdown season out of Jonu Smith. So, like, he's he's. He's put the work in, and he uses his so tight ends really well. So you mean he's the only person that's made John irrelevant, really? What? I, Literally, A yeah. couple times. <laughs> a, I mean, listen, he went over to fucking uh, New England, and Bill Belichick, who had Gronk and Aaron Hernandez, couldn't do a goddamn thing We paid him a bag, and he's worthless. Facts. What What a lot of people also don't talk about is throughout their first two years in the careers, Kyle Pitts and Pat Frymuth were, like, neck and neck. It was looking like if you drafted Pat Frymuth in the third round of your rookie drafts or whatever it may be, like – you were getting the value because he was putting up similar production to Kyle Pitts. Pat's going to be good this year. He's going to be very solid, assuming Brandon Ayuk is not in that offense. Now, if Brandon Ayuk is in that offense, we readdress that 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 point about me saying, you know, you want the guy in this that is the receiver too in the offense. Yeah. Probably doesn't happen. Now, does that mean that uh, he can't do what he was doing when Deontay Johnson and George Pickens were there? Right. Absolutely not. He can still do that. It just may not be the ceiling that I'm projecting right now. I think Frymuth, it might sound hot takey. This is a guy who could give you a top seven tight end year. Like he could give you the Jake Ferguson year, the David and Joku year of last year, and you're getting him as like tight end twelve, tight end thirteen. I right love now. yeah. He's like an auto pick for me on, on underdog. Love his love his price right now. I don't think that's hot takey at all. If that's no? hot takey, top seven tight end, that's that's that'd be crazy. I, it's, a, it's a good crop of dudes at the top of the tight end list. For though. sure. You're talking about, like, right behind Kittle at that point. Yeah. You yep. know? I mean, I just mean that Russell Wilson in that offense, like, we, Pat Fryer has been playing with who also yeah. in his career. So there, There's no, like, there's no aspect of Pat's situation that didn't get better going right. into yeah. this year. And he and he showed his sophomore year that he's, like, a player. And as you, you said, you? even if it was IU, Corey, which it's not currently, maybe he doesn't have quite that PPR, like, raw catch number upside, but – you're telling me that's not more attention where he's going to end up getting a lot of targets in the red zone for touchdowns? touchdowns. That's ultimately tight ends that finish outside of the top six. The difference is yeah. Be yeah. Did you see the rumor um, in this, like, I don't know if anybody's on X seen the Pretty Ricky. I think that's his name or whatever. Yeah, he's he's dropping all these. Yeah, he's the yeah. IU guy. So, anyways, there was rumors that in this – trade actually Frymouth could go to San Francisco and mm-hmm. if that happens that's ridiculous but that's one of the rumors that would be right now a sick two tight end setup Kittle and Pat on the field at the same time Debo don't even Ricky yeah we don't even need to run the wide receiver three in San Francisco anymore yeah that would be kind of gas but no yeah. no chance that, that, that that's crazy. like you said there's a lot of rumors going on nothing has officially happened so as of today right I feel now, like Arthur Smith would we, like prefer I've, I've, <laughs> Pat Fryer with the brand I know we said we weren't going to talk about IU being in Pittsburgh now we're going to talk about Pat Fryer with being in San Francisco yeah. so <laughs> we're going to start making up there's, scenarios. there's lots no. of rumors going around today Fryer <laughs> is a stealer and today Pat Fryer oh. is a sleeper in your drafts all right you know who will so. definitely be a bangle next year it is mr chase brown mm. right chase brown i think is like the juiciest most obvious like high upside dude is he gonna hit i don't know but if he does hit we're gonna look back and be like this was the top three most obvious things of all time you know we look at what the Bengals did to their running back room joe mixon's gone they signed zach moss it was like a two-year eight million dollar deal that's not a lot of money. Uh, it tells me that, yeah, we want you to come in and be a part of this backfield rotation. Zach Moss, I get it. Again, this is one of those like recency bias things. We saw him play really well in Indy for like a four-week span, but we also have a three-year sample size prior to that where he wasn't doing shit in right. Buffalo, right? So like, right. what's more likely for Zach Moss as like who he is as a player? I think he's probably somewhere in between. I think he's like a, a good, solid running back that you can keep in a rotation. Almost like, you know, a, uh, a Gus Edwards or like a downgraded Gus Edwards. When you're running behind Lamar, you're going to look a lot better. In this offense, this is going to be a very high-powered offense. Like, Joe Mixon leaves a ton of opportunity behind. And when you look at Zach Moss versus Chase Brown, they are two completely different styles of bag. Zach Moss is, like, the thumper, the plotter. He could do everything at, like, a pretty good level. Chase Brown is a dude who brings, you know, 4-4 four, four speed, explosiveness, uh, 5'10", 210 pounds, has three down size if they need that to be the case. But I think, realistically, running backs in this offense will get 20 five to 27 touches a game and it'll be split 50 50 
as for who gets the goal line work, probably Zach Moss to start the season. But Chase Brown's more explosive, and I think he plays much better in the two- and four-minute drills, profiles as the pass catching back, gives them uh, the explosive ability in, like, the screen game. And, you know, you talk about, like, Tyler Boyd leaving. I think this is going to be a more up-tempo offense without Joe Mixon, without uh, that, like, solidified, you know, first and second down grinder. I think that could lead to more screen opportunities for Chase Brown. But at the end of the day, I just think he's like a really explosive running back that brings a lot of upside and brings something to this offense that I don't think they've had from the running back room in, in a while. For sure. And you, you talk about like his size there. He, in most NFL rooms at the running back position, there is not this old school bell cow back anyway. Like yeah. that's really more a thing of the past. And for him, it's if he's getting the third down work, can he just be someone that uh, he doesn't even have to take all the work from the first and second downs from Zach Moss. Can he get some of that? And then if he's, efficient enough is he out there at all on the red zone if he, he basically can be the guy that gets all the valuable touches and Joe Burrow healthy on this offense it feels like outside of Chase nobody is uh baking in for this offense in general that like with Burrow healthy this thing could be ridiculous again yeah, I was looking back at the, at the, the season because I'm looking at like how did Joe Mixon perform how did the running back rooms perform and when Joe Burry Joe Burrow is healthy he's had two seasons where he's played 16 games basically the full season and in those seasons they were the seventh highest scoring offense and the ninth highest right. scoring offense yeah. so they're a well-oiled machine when Burrow is healthy and Burrow is out there. And that's going to give a lot of scoring opportunities. And what, what excites me the most about Chase Brown is like Zach Moss is not good enough to hold off a player if they're playing really well. So if Chase Brown comes out and like dominates touches and plays really well, there's a really, really easy path to him becoming the starter immediately. The biggest takeaway for me on that two year, $8 million thing you mentioned was I, I'm pretty sure there's not much guarantees of any at all year two. They, they don't have any level of future commitment from, right. from him so financially. When, when I'm looking at like, other running back situations where you might comp like a Chase Brown to Tajay Spears. The Titans gave Tony Pollard like, you know, $25 million or something like that. So no matter how well Tajay Spears plays, Tony Pollard's still going to be a factor. And I and I would project Zach Moss to be a factor throughout the entire season, but I, I just don't see, you know, a flippening yeah. there, right? Like I don't see a, any world where uh, Chase Brown, if he plays well, can't just jump Zach Moss. And, in the and I just want to jump in there because I, I also really like Chase Brown. He was actually an honorable mention for me if you didn't take him, mm -hmm. but uh, I just look at last Damn. year what he was able to do. You, Joe you know Mixon, what? what? I say you know what real. Joe, I didn't even I understand what you said. <laughs> Joe Mixon, he accounted for 67% of the carries on this offense, 11% of the targets in this offense. That was just Joe Mixon. I mean, you think that somebody's not going to come in and take that. And the fact that Chase Brown also, last year with Joe Mixon there, who I think is a much more talented running back than Zach Moss, he went from a 1.7% target share all the way to like 24% by the end of the year. Like he was earning touches with Joe Mixon in the offense. Yeah. So it's it just shows you there's already data to, to kind of back up that Chase Brown is just going to continue to get more and more workload. And they've been yapping about him. At they've camp. been yapping they, about they him like at camp. They're talking yeah. about how he looks really good. So yeah. I totally agree here. I, th I think he's a good sleeper. Yeah. You, said, you said his sleeper was your, your honorable mention. Damn, that's crazy. Well, I, I in all fairness, <laughs> when he said we're doing the sleepers episode, I threw like four names in there, like within five seconds. So mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to take ADP 121, 122, 123, 124. <laughs> All right, Adam. All right. Uh, my, my last sleeper here is um, Chuba Hubbard. And, like, I think about when you're doing this list in general and redraft, right, can I, in the early part of the season, pencil in a starter here that, this far down? You shouldn't be able to, really. And, and why, why am I able to get Chuba? It's because of the presence of Jonathan Brooks. But what do we know? The presence of Jonathan Brooks is he's going to be not playing for a while. Him, him and the, like, whole team has been open about that they're going to be slow bringing him along. Offensive lines improved. They got a hunt. They brought up Robert Hunt guard. Great offensive line improvement, I think. I'm not saying he's going to be amazing, but this far down he's going to get the starting work probably for at least the first quarter, if not the first half of the season. And he was actually really good last year for this, uh, for this yeah. team down the stretch. So I, I don't know why, when we're playing for just one year, why he's like – someone that's forgotten about too. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the the counterpoint would just be, you know, second half of the season when you need your players the most, like fantasy playoffs, is it Brooks's backfield by that point? And, and if it is, I think the same conversation would be, I w obviously there's a chance it's not. If it is, that's why I drafted Chuba Hubbard this late because I can put him on the waiver wire where I add someone else that yeah. is that. I agree. I think Chuba is like one of the better values in drafts. You know, they have already come out and be like, we're probably not going to see Brooks till a week three or four. No reason to rush him. They're not a winning team. He's 20 years old. ACL tear. Like, I was, I also I was just going to bring that up. We've been that, saying this for fucking six months at this point. You know? Yeah, like, I, I also feel like that soundbite that we got from Dave Canales where he said that it was weird the way that he said it and maybe I'm reading too much into it but he said that he likely won't be close to ready until about week three or four mm. which doesn't mean 
he will be ready by week three or four. So, he said he won't be close until, which means that might even be. They so might just well, honestly. Just, Pup is four games, right? Yeah, minimum. Yeah, they probably like that's not surprising at all. Pup and then like a slow ramp up. Yeah, four weeks going from twenty percent of the snaps to thirty to fifty to seven. Like, yeah, it, it's it's a long road. Like, I don't really think we'll see anything relevant from Brooks over the first half of the year, at least. And, yeah. and then I think about for the Panthers with Canales. We we hope it's better. It, it I, in theory it'd be. It's impossible to be worse, but <laughs> what what's the situation? I mean, they upgraded it, the O line significantly. It's significant. It would be yeah. impossible to be worse. That maybe they stay the same, but like that's my point. Actually, with what's the range of outcome? What do they have to be where he where they're ramping up Brooks to be like? You know what? We're still enough into contention where like we're going to let the young kid take this this thing and fucking go. Yeah, Red shirt. Nah. Like the Panthers are in the mix now. Granted, that division sucks. I mean, but it's what what do they gotta? <laughs> you moved the Falcons helmet on me. I was looking for it. Mm. You know what real. <laughs> you know what but I mean, it, you know what they're going to have to be at least in playoff contention and feeling really good about their team to be like, he, and he has to be healthy. All those things have to be, those what ifs have to be checked for him to yeah, probably take Chuba yeah, out of the backfield. That ain't happening. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, side note as well, we're just talking about Carolina Panthers. What do you guys think about the fact that they don't want to play? They're not playing Bryce Young in the preseason this week. Like, it feels like you mean really this week or at all. I heard that he's not playing this week, and it I mean, it's week one may but. not be. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but it feels like he should definitely be getting reps this the, preseason. Most likely, I don't remember what Dave Canales did with the Bucks last year, or Baker? I guess what their their plan was last year. Because yeah, um, I just you I look know. at what the he did last year. Now. I feel like you got to throw but, Bryce uh, in there I, and I, see what I happens. I mean, I, I, I hear you, but also like it, it feels like the preseason is becoming. Is phased out as like the old telephone. Yeah, like it's, it's kinda, just it's, dead. it's tough. Yeah, because they moved it to three weeks, and I think they're petitioning to move it to two weeks if they yeah. go to an eighteen game schedule. And it's like we knew how it worked when it was a four week schedule, where it was like week one the starters got one drive, week two maybe a quarter, week three like you're getting a, a lot of the starters. Yeah, like a full half, maybe even into the second half. Week four, no one played. Yeah. But now it's like there's no rhyme or reason for how teams yeah. are preparing for it, and it's. Kind of unfortunate because well, there's a lot of takeaways from the preseason. Yeah, it was it was weird too because it was like uh, they're saying like Joe Burrow is playing this week, but like Bryce Young won't play this week, and it's like yeah. well, it should be flopped the other way there. But yeah, whatever. and speaking of the preseason in the draft guide that's available right now, bdge.co, I'll be doing full uh, game recaps of every preseason game for any fantasy relevant player. So anytime the starters get onto the field, we'll be looking at snap counts, who's running in three wide receiver sets, who's the goal line back two and four minute drill type beats. All right. Those will be live like the day after the preseason games happen. So if you have not yet caught the draft guide, that's available on bdge.co at full price, but you can get it for a very, very discounted price. If you sign up on underdog fantasy, the app, you use promo code BDGE, you deposit $10 or more. You will get the draft guide emailed to you. You will get a free square for week one on underdog. You'll get to draft some best ball teams with us. It's a fantastic fucking deal right now, right? So underdog fantasy, you'll get the preseason recaps as well as all of our rankings, must draft players, our full list of sleepers as well, all available to you there. Plus, if you sign up, we've been ripping drafts every day in the Discord, so you'll get to draft with us too. And if you're like, listen, I only play in one league and I don't know if I need the draft guide, sign up with that promo code. You could draft as many fucking teams as you want and win all that money back. And you never have to manage them. <laughs> Dope. All right. How you done? Hey. That's Sixer? That's Sixers. All right. Well, we're going to uh, cap it out there. Maybe maybe like a quick fire, like four or five guys that we like. Sleepers end of draft as well here, just to like throw a few more names in. I brought up uh, Demarcus Robinson. I think he went down a stretch last year where he kind of like broke out for Stafford. You know, Puka's obviously dealing with a knee thing. We don't think it's that serious, but maybe it, you know, inflames uh, Cooper Cup's a little bit older, so maybe he deals with an injury. But Demarcus is the clear wide receiver three, and this is an offense that's going to produce a ton of passing statistics. So I like D-Rob as a later sleeper. My, my honorable mention uh, was going to be Marshawn Lloyd. I just think that Josh Jacobs has not always remained healthy in all the seasons, and the Packers – in their current offensive system, I've typically used two running backs. So there's an opportunity, I think, for Marshawn Lloyd to be relevant, standalone value while Jacobs is playing. And there's also path work for him to end up being a league winner down the second half of the season. Yeah, I'm going to throw out two names. Sorry, guys, I'm throwing out two. But, I thought you already, uh, you already used it's perfect because now in the Chase title Brown's we can say 10, 10 players. There oh. you go, there you go. I, <laughs> Always looking out for I us. like to target the – they're being drafted pretty much – Similarly right now, but I like to target the Bills wide receiver room with Curtis Samuel or Khalil Shakir, whoever mm-hmm. you like there. I like to target Samuel. He's the one I prefer. But uh, I think you just want to target that room because 
anybody could really lead it, and yep. you're getting these guys cheap, and it's supposed to be a high-scoring offense. Josh Allen's a great quarterback, yada, yada, yada. You also have a late, late round. Like, if you want to throw a dart at Tyler Conklin, I like Tyler Conklin. We were talking about tight ends that can be the number two receiving option. Mike Williams starting the year on the pup. Maybe you get some Conklin action. I don't know. That's that's a sleeper Mike for me. Mike Williams there. hurt? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. A bit. Who would have guessed? Also, he's also old. I Who would have guessed? A little bit man. old. Yeah. I like Tyler Conklin. It's a good call. Yeah, that's a good call. He's too. my goat. Conk, conk. Hank, you know what a deal. You got an off. You know what a deal. You got an sir. You're a fucking clown. You're All right, we're going to wrap it up there. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll be putting out videos for the remainder of our lives pretty much every single day. Uh, hit the button like this if you enjoyed the video. And, of course, again, send the link down below to your commissioner for League Safe. Make his life easier, please. We love you. Enough yapping. Hank. Hank. Smoochies.